All right, folks, we got a quick set Gen 3 here. It's uh, an uptown model. And I'm going to make an effect to pick this two different ways. One, officially, we'll do a pick and a gut. Um, but I'm going to actually pick it twice before I gut it because I want to show you the picking uh, premise from outside of the housing. But in order for this to be an official pick of a Gen 3 uh, for my Reddit brown belt, I need to pick it in its housing. Uh, so we'll test the key first. Key works. It is locked up. It's really, these are floppy locks, and once you see why it's designed, you'll know that you'll know why. But basically, I've got a Peterson H1 uh, that I lost the tip on at some point. I've rounded it down. Um, it is now. Let's see. Are we zeroed? Zero. It is at the tip still 1.32 uh, millimeters. And of course, this is a 15,000th pick, so that's about how thick the metal is. And I just took a grinder and I just rounded off the tip and, you know, kind of made it smooth. I already stabbed myself with it once trying to sand it. Um, you can see the nice, perfect, perfect little pinhole there on the side of my thumb. That hurt like hell. Um, and probably tattooed me since there were filing shavings on it. So we're not going to need a regular tension wrench to start with. We're just going to take our regular pick. This thing's got a keyway you can drive a bus down. So let's go ahead and let's start. Now, the way I start these things, you're looking for a hole in the side. It's, I don't know, probably about twice the width of the pick. Make sure that you're starting off nice and straight up and down. Uh, and make sure that all of your your pins are free and the associated sliders. And then just kind of go in the side and there's a little hole where there's drill protection that you can get into and you'll feel the edge of the sidebar. If you put a little bit of pressure in, you can slide it in, but you don't want to start off there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just touching it and then seeing who binds. Okay, so two bound, one didn't. So that means I probably don't even have to set him, otherwise he'd be binding. Um, let's go ahead and lift up on two while slowly working the shim back. And at a certain point, it should whoop, pop. There, okay. Now, I want to make sure I'm in good on that. Because what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to follow your picking oof, with the shim. So as you pick down the stack, and I lost my seat on two. There's that one. And you'll feel it in the shim. It'll be able to go further and further in as you pick. God, I wish I could do this in a different housing. There's just nothing to grab a hold of on these uptowns. And sometimes you got to pull it out and reset. It is a pain. This is not an easy lock to pick because the shim is very finicky. But once you get it going, let's see, I don't have my set. Oh, maybe? Yeah, there we go.
So you see how the shim is really far in there now. The sidebar is not actually that long. You'll have to excuse my son. Not quite in as far as I'd like for this. I don't have any pre preset mark I'm trying to hit. Okay, I got a pin that's stuck up now. Somehow I overset the hell out of one. Let's see if that's even close. Nope. So I'm going to work the shim back out right to the beginning. And see if I can't avoid pushing up on one. I'm assuming that's some kind of anti-bump thing to have zero set pins. It looks like one and five are both there as bump protection. Um, I'm pretty sure this is an easy lock to bump because of the way bumping works. thing to remember is you're kind of moving around in here kind of lightly. It does not take much to set one of these pins. And if it's not letting you move on it, that means something's not set right. Because as the side, the sidebar will want to set from one side to the other. If you don't have it lined up, it doesn't work, and so many other variables in play. Once you get it, though, you it generally becomes easier to get the more you get it. It's getting it started that's the hard part, getting those first couple pins on there in such a way that you can then control the tension accurately. And as you set, like I said, your shim will just naturally glide in a lot farther each time. And it really helps if you've got, you know, a vice that can actually grip this damn lock body. Oh, there we go. You see how that went super deep in? That's picked. Now you put your tension bar on the top. And you turn it. And at, oh yeah. Your shim will get tight. And as you do, you'll get more and more rotation on the core. Until... It comes out and spins freely. Nine minutes. Hey, it's still under the 10 minute mark. All right, we're going to pick it one more time, but this one's going to be easy. I'm going to move the camera up here so I don't spoil this whole thing. Um, 
because I got a lot to do. I guess that'll be in focus. Um, so let's keep the vise here. Now you want to remove this little El Cheapo clip off the back. Whoops. And the core falls out. Now let's go ahead and lock this back up. There we go. And you can see, I'm going to come in here real close now. And. Volkas. Okay. All right. So you see it's got the square sidebar in it, which means that makes it so you can't tension it. What ends up happening is, is if you try, it's just going to get hung up on the side and not actually tension the pins. Um, so let's, let, let's show you what actually happens with the sidebar when you're shimming it from the side. So what you do is you come in on the side and let's see if I can make this so that you can see both the sidebar and the pins from up above. Does that work? Is that working? Can you see those? I don't know. I think we need to come a little more this way. Uh, there. All right. Now I can show you what's going on in this thing. Probably should have had that prepared for a little bit better. But all right. So what you're doing is there's a little bit of anti-drill protection right here. And when you go in on the side, you're going to go into a channel and you can see where for a while I was trying to do it this way and I scratched up the top of the surface trying to put tension but you can only ever end up putting tension on the back of it and that's why I'd like to I'm gonna try and experiment with night and all Ooh, that core doesn't turn at all um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just have to be delicate um, get some night and all to go in and then just make like a sharp angle right there to tension on the center of the bar but let's go ahead and put this this shim in and you can see that when I hit it you see the rocking you see how this side goes down and this side comes up that's because we're taking that sidebar and I'm pressing down on the top of it from in here so and that's the premise of what we want to do so while we're picking when you start off you start off at the beginning where the bar is going to go down the first oh god this is so awkward um and you want to just kind of lift up the pins as you go and if you can get it right i'm going to just set two so you can see what the difference in the sidebar. Okay. You see how the shim goes in a little bit further. You pull it back a little bit. Oop, you set the next pin. Come on. I'm trying to do this backwards and upside down and I'm just going to leave that right like that for a second. Oops. Dropped a pin. This is the most awkward way I could have possibly tried to pick this lock on camera. Then you set the next pin. Which for some reason my shim does oh there we go. Now you can start to see the tip of the shim coming out. And then as you set the next pin, oh, you see the sidebar dropped. 
and when it goes all the way in that's when you know you're in the right spot because the shim can go all the way into the hole from that point when you start popping your tension bar in which I can't really do effectively but as you pull the tension bar out the sidebar will work its way in god this is hard to do there maybe like that yeah I got it in there and you can get the rotation alright so I'm gonna back the camera off so I don't lose anything uh. Sorry, it's not in focus. Let's focus real quick. And we're going to do the gut on this thing. And you get to hear my son screeching and hollering and everything else. Now, I do have a Quick Set Gen 1 here that I'm going to show you the difference between them really quickly uh, in a minute. Actually, I don't know if that's a Gen 1 or a Gen 2. I assume it's a Gen 1 because the sidebar is different. Um, it's got the rounded sidebar. Yeah, yeah, is that is that so? You getting ready to go see Grandma and Grandpa? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Zaza loves you too. Okay. So, let's come down here. Real close. And I can show you the difference. Okay. So... Let's lock this one back up. So you can see that that has a square sidebar and it has that gaping hole in the side. The Gen 1 or Gen 2 or whatever this one is has a rounded sidebar and that lets you tension it directly from the keyway like a normal lock. And you can see that I've been working on this one for a while and it's really cheap pop metal. Uh, so don't crank on it too hard otherwise you'll end up with a jacked up keyway. Um, but yeah, you, you can see the obvious differences there. Internally, they seem to be almost the same. Um, I think the spring mechanism is different. So let's just back off slightly here so I don't screw this up. Get a pin in that. I already got everything else I need. You don't need a follower for these things. Um, it's, it's deceptively simple. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my key in. And on the back, there is this little C-clip thingy. Uh, I just go like this to get it off. Okay, there we go. Take the spacer ring off. Now, as far as pulling it out, the only thing you have to be careful of is just keep your thumb on the carriage. Um, because the carriage can spring and fly off. So, yeah, and you can see it's, it's actually square inside the body as well. Um, which serves to grab a hold of that sidebar uh, and just totally screw with it. Um, the sidebar on this does not come out without removing those two little black plastic uh, spring things and that's actually what pulls the sidebar in uh, when you get it picked um, otherwise it's a standard smart key carriage system um, there's this little thing right here which you know I'm not entirely sure what it does I think that's part of the you know difference between whether or not yeah, see, that's that's the key retainer right there. You can't pull the key out with that press down. I'm just going to take the key out. Now, I tend to do this to take them out because I don't want the sliders going everywhere. But... There we go. 
I'm not going to take this apart. You have to undo this plastic thing. And the problem with these locks and plastic things is if it breaks, you can't really get replacements. Yes? Can I help you? Can I help you, young man? Nice lid. See? He, he gave me a plastic lid. Here you go. Go give that to Mama. All right. So let's pull these things out and take a look at them. Sorry about that, guys, but, you know, when you're a parent. So let's see. Uh, there's no, there's not going to be any way I'm going to be able to get that like that. So let's, uh, these aren't in any particular order. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to set them in the pinning mat. And then we're going to get a close-up of them so you can see how they work. There's not really any other removable parts um, that aren't a pain in the rear to do. Uh, you can get these the finger pins out, you know these these bad boys here, uh, but they are kind of eh, they're kind of a pain. Uh, I'll show you when I put the key in here how they go. You can imagine, you put them in, and that sets the combination. And then there's the carriage with the single spring and the sidebar. I will pop the sidebar up so that you can see what it looks like. And you can see on the bottom, it's got that V shape that goes into these things. Whoops. Okay. You can see it's a whole sidebar and square. Like so. That's not in focus. get this directly on camera where's my focal spot there you go you can see so yeah a really annoying lock you know I've worn this thing down enough that it's uh Looks like there's starting to be a bevel on the backward side. I might have actually been able to pick this easier counterclockwise. Huh. Well, let's get that. Close-up of that. Close-up of that. So you can see everything. This looks like an engine block sitting in here. Beautiful. see all the gates all the teeth everything's there so I hope you enjoyed the video sorry it went a little bit long um, um, sorry about the interruptions from my son uh, I've been wanting to get this one picked on camera for a while and it the getting the shim right this was really the hard part, was getting the shim just so that it would function just right to get in there and put tension on that sidebar. Um, a Peterson H1 is literally almost perfect for it. You just cut off, you know, probably, well, cut off the entire angled part down to the narrowest point uh, where it starts to be straight. Uh, curve it a little bit, put a little hook in there, sand it down, grind it down, and you've got yourself a Quick Set Gen 3. Uh, it does not work for the Quick Set Gen 1 because, well, the hole. Okay. You can see where the sidebar hole is on the side of this one. It's real thin right here. That lets you get in there. This one, on the other hand, does not. It's way down in there. You, you still can get in there, but it's way down in there. It's kind of a pain. There's a very sharp angle in it. 
Um, somebody might be able to figure out how to do it, but short of being able to hook something around behind the face of where the lock is, I can't really see. It's not necessary. I mean, it's a rounded, you know, it's a rounded sidebar. You can just pick it up with medium tension, uh, like a medium or something like that. Uh, I'm not even going to bother showing that one because this one is infinitely more interesting uh, and covers pretty much a worst case scenario for the quick set. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have yourselves a good 4th of July if you're in the United States. If you're outside, uh, I hope you have a good rest of your Sunday, rest of your weekend, and rest of your